Rob. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rob's Rogues in the Batman Universe, and we're back again for Maxwell's Batman Animated Series action figure reviews that uh, he sent me these wonderful action figures to keep for my very own, and it was just a very gracious friend, so thank you again very much, sir. And thank you very much for allowing me to keep my Batman Animated Series figures uh, reviews uh, keep going, even though there's uh, about a year span in between them. Uh, today we're taking a look at the Gotham City Enforcement Team. Uh, this was a gift pack or a box set that came out that had Batman Nightwing a uh, repaint of a Batgirl, which is the first we've seen on this channel, but she is a reissued figure. And for the very first time in action figure form, a Commissioner Gordon action figure back when these originally came out in 1998. Uh, Commissioner Gordon is off to the side. We're kind of going to save him for last here. Uh, but we do have uh, two reissued, actually three issued uh, action figures. And we'll kind of go through them. Uh, this is the standard Batman, of which I did uh, do not have. I have one that's close to it. Um, this came from a Tech Glider Batman, which you can tell they're very much the same. Uh, he came with a cloth cape, which I like so much better. But this is the correct color scheme. I didn't like the uh, plastic capes that try to get this Batman to stand. Um, it, they're funny. I mean, you'd have to take them off to get them in a Batmobile or a plane. And um, I never liked doing that, uh, having an action figure where I had to remove the cape. Because if he was supposed to be wearing a cape, well, now he wasn't because you couldn't get him seated in the Batmobile correctly with this hard uh, plastic cape. But yeah, it looks okay for uh, standing purposes, but it's really stiff and jagged. Um, and I didn't like the under paint of it where it's gray um, I have one that uh, they did paint it all blue but this underneath gray it should have just been black in there maybe a blue underneath might have been okay but this is the standard crime uh, solver Batman you see a little peg in the back where you would po put in the device he had on um, this is the one I will always uh, stand with my Batman animated series figures this is the new adventures of Batman again I think the cloth cape just works so much better so we'll move that guy off to the side. Uh, the gimmick that this Batman came with, it really didn't say on the package, but it is like a trap, like a bear trap. So you can kind of see it here. Uh, these are made by Hasbro. You kind of see in the product description up here. Hopefully you can see that. Even though Kenner started the line, uh, Hasbro ended up taking over right towards the end um, as they then had the license for a while. So it is part Kenner, part uh, uh, mainly Kenner, but partly Hasbro. Uh, these came out in 1998. I don't know if you can see the product stamp in there at all. But 1998, when the new Adventures of Batman came out. Or the new Batman Adventures. I always said it wrong. So if we had our new Adventures of uh, Batman Joker, like, hmm, I wonder what's in here, bats. Um, <laughs> you would push this little piece in. And hopefully, uh, now I got him stand on it. You would activate the clamp. There it is. So a little mechanism unfolds here, comes back in the center position, and there's just too much weight um, on him, or I didn't have this positioned quite right. Let me do this again. So this should be able to catch the Joker, kind of, sort of, with the way this is set up. But um, yeah. So anyway, you catch him like that chomp him in half but that's the gimmick that this particular Batman came with that's not listed as a bear trap uh, Batman it just says Batman and this was the little gimmick that they came up and uh, created for this set as I knocked Nightwing off here so move Batman off to the side uh, we'll save Nightwing for la for next to last a uh, Batgirl uh, there was like a whole tech series that came out. So the very first Batgirl that was ever made uh, had this uh, body uh, buck mold. Uh, we'll kind of zoom in here. And she's painted in the uh, new uh, Batman Adventures. Uh, initially, when this figure was made, she was given a gray type bodysuit that looked more like her very first appearance in the Batman animated TV series. But for this particular set, they uh, wanted her to look like the uh, new Batman Adventures. Um, and we still never had an actual official, correctly colored version until this Batgirl came out. 
Um, her articulation, the head is really loose on this figure. And even if I could turn the head, uh, it's you wouldn't be able to actually because of the way the hair is sculpted. So I think it's just loose uh, just from the age that the figure uh, that it is. And the head, hair, and cape are all one piece. So the head was never made to turn. It's just loose just from time, love, and wear on the figure. Uh, the, artic the rest of the articulation is very uh, minimal. It's uh, The arm would be able to go all the way around, but the hair is in the way, so it would only go forward and back, and that's on uh, both sides. Uh, the legs can get into a seated position, and she could set in a Batmobile or the Batplane as her hard plastic cape uh, did not come all the way down beyond her butt, so uh, she could set in there. The cape you would kind of have to fold over just a little bit, but you could squeeze her to fit her in a vehicle. Now, both Batman and Batgirl came with like a little missile that you could put in their hand. Of course, they're oversized. Um, Maxwell did not send or probably lost the uh, housing part for the missile, but I actually have the projectile missile piece. I just didn't set it up here, but you did see in the product photo, if you zoom in really close, you can kind of tell. Now, we would eventually get an actual proper Batgirl in the Justice League Unlimited line. I think this one looks a lot, lot better. Uh, yes, her head is really oversized, but um, that's kind of how she was drawn in the animated series. Um, I wish now you could see how small she is, but she was rather small in the animated series and I just think looks a lot better and plus she has this nice cloth cape. So that was um, really nice uh, to have that uh, we didn't get it for quite some time till the Unlimited line, but still uh, to have an actual uh, official animated series Batgirl figure was really cool. And we've already seen her, but I wanted you to be able to see the two together. Uh, now for this figure. This is the proper Nightwing, the Crime Solver Nightwing that came out in the very first run of the Batman animated series. So for me, this is the first time I'm having this figure. So I was on the fence of do I review him as the standard figure that he originally was, that just happens to be put together in this gift set or do I keep it in this gift set review? He comes with all the accessories that he originally came with in this gift set, but I decided I'll just do it as the whole gift set, but I will give the equal time to both uh, Nightwing and Commissioner Gordon, both. Um, a really nice Nightwing. Uh, there weren't very many Nightwing figures made before this point. Uh, I believe this is the only second Nightwing. Uh, the other one was the Legends of the Dark Knight, which is a series I'm going to be reviewing uh, shortly after this. So you can see prob probably the very first Nightwing figure uh, ever made, as, as far as I'm aware of. Um, I do like the stance a lot better than the one I initially reviewed, and I'll show you in just a second here. Actually, let's do that now. The first Nightwing figure I ever owned uh, came in a two-pack of Batman and Nightwing. Now, this pose is really cool. I, I like the updated pose, and they gave him more of the animated series um, style just in the way he was more, um, I would guess, articulated a little bit. But he is much shorter than he, what he originally was supposed to be. So they gave a new sculpt for this particular line that came out. It was always like Batman versus somebody, Batman versus Two-Face, Batman versus the Joker. Um, in this one, it did say Batman versus Nightwing, or uh, correct, it did say Batman and Nightwing. So uh, they gave this Nightwing a metallic paint job, and his mullet hair is uh, flowing a little bit, so a little bit more of a dynamic pose for him, as opposed to the uh, you know vanilla just straight up and down pose that this one is uh, due to his knees being bent just a little bit he does appear to be um, actually a lot shorter uh, now kind of seeing them together uh, let's bring up uh, Batman and this Batman is still taller than Nightwing which is uh, really pretty cool um, so that means that this Nightwing was a lot shorter which does tend to make him look a little younger, but Dick should be getting close uh, to the same height that Bruce uh, would be a little bit. So uh, it is nice to have an actual 
standard uh, Nightwing. So, um, the gadgets that this Nightwing uh, came with was a uh, the traditional Mattel or Mattel Kenner um, grapple type gun. Comes with a really nice long rope, a very long rope. Jeez, um, I've not had this out, Maxwell. So, pardon hitting the camera there. So, this will fit in here like we always do. We will fire it. Don't fire it at anybody. Uh, could have small choking hazards and patterns. They give a little Nightwing nod here to his bird type wings, which I think are really kind of cool. And the top of the grapple gun as well. So, uh, this would be meant to, for Nightwing to hold. Again, the oversized. Uh, parts. <laughs> I mean, there's no plausible way if this were real, he would literally be like this, like he would be holding it. So I, I get they're trying to make it so you could fire it and grapple onto something, but uh, I was never a fan of the oversized uh, weapons that they would give uh, the figures as Nightwing falls here. Pardon me. So what we'll do, we'll fire this bad boy, hopefully the string stays uh, nice and loose here. So there's your firing mechanism and right off of Wayne Manor. I'm just gonna try and grapple it, why not? Let's see if we can't grapple this bad boy. Into the cavity, here we go. Three, two, got it. So there, I could pull this whole thing over. So I always liked that at least to be able to have uh, my figures be able to like dangle from a curtain or something like that. Now what would kind of work is give this to a six inch figure. Again, it would be a little bit bigger, but could be a little bit more plausible. And I have done that from time to time in just uh, staging action figure shots. So I'll set that off to the side here. We won't wind the whole thing up. And the other thing he came with, uh, with, with is their Crime Stopper um, gadget or a gimmick that all of them had some type of a hologram or a thing that it would do to help you solve a crime from the back of the box. So it's got a traditional Nightwing animated series logo on it, and then you can open it up and you can see the cast of the show, or, or the primary cast of the show. So we have Bane, Mr. Freeze, Commissioner Gordon, Batman, Catwoman, Killer Croc, Robin, the Joker, Poison Ivy, and Batgirl. And what you could do is line up the name. You see, oh, that's the Joker. Oh, that's Poison Ivy. That's Batgirl. Uh, but you can't get <laughs> uh, Robin or Killer Croc into this, just this top part. So uh, the gimmick is what it is. There's Commissioner Gordon. There's Mr. Freeze. And there is Bane. And you can kind of see what would be the Nightwing type of uh, computer thing. You could be like, beep, pop, boop, boop, boop. Okay. And uh, it's also designed for him to hold it so it could kind of be like a shield and you could have it like this almost as some type of a glider which if they would have taken the extra mile because he did have gliding wings in the animated series if there was a little peg in the back you could have had him glide kind of like that which would have been kind of cool and now we'll get a look at the figure himself It's nice to actually have a standard Nightwing. Uh, the other one here um, topples over very, very easy. He has to kind of be leaning up against somebody. But I'm glad I have two different looking Nightwings that you could pose in two different ways. As well, it's in the Batcave listening and one that's kind of fighting. So really cool to have two. Um, the head turns uh, would go 360, but due to the Richard Marks mullet, it's not going to, so it only looks left to right. And then standard action figure articulation, arms go all the way around, and the legs go forward and back. So his rear end does not get in the way. And again, this has the copyright date stamp of 1998. 1998. Where were you in 1998? So that is Nightwing. And now... Well, here we go. <laughs> and now the big draw to this pack, the first time that Commissioner Gordon has ever been made into an action figure, this is one of my holy grail figures. I have wanted a Commissioner Gordon action figure for a very, very long time. And we're going to be getting one in DC Collectibles for the Capullo series, and there was a DC Direct 
um, Batman Year One uh, action figure made uh, some time back for um, DC Direct. But as far as three and three quarter inch, this is the very first, and right out of the animated series. That was something that was always nice about this line is that. Uh, the figures looked like how they were supposed to, like they came right out of the animated series. Uh, now, Commissioner Gordon did always have a jacket. You very rarely saw him out of his jacket. So um, it would have been cool if they would have just put a jacket on him so he would have looked um, more like the animated series. But there were some episodes where he's talking with Barbara if he was working uh, late in the uh, GCPD, he would have his jacket off. And again, he comes with this big oversized gun. Now, he is supposed to have two guns. Um, I've dug through the box, and unless it's under something else, I think this is the only one that Maxwell uh, sent. So I could be wrong. There could be a second gun. But uh, what's really funny, here's his normal size gun right there. And we have this big, huge cannon that would be more appropriate for the Joker or Harley Quinn uh, something I do have is Lex Luthor's gun from uh, the Toy Biz uh, Lex Luthor figure that this works much, much better. It looks more plausible that uh, he could have <laughs> a normal uh, gun, which uh, I think they should have done. Now, he does have this nice trigger finger in this hand. Um, I don't know if I could get it to rest in there very well. I kind of can. So I will probably end up posing him with this gun uh, on my shelf. I think he'll look really cool with it. So uh, this was uh, a figure that came uh, in the second box that Mac was, uh, Macwell, Maxwell sent me. Um, and one that I was really was hoping that was in the first box uh, wasn't in there. I thought, well, maybe he never got around to getting the uh, action figure. But uh, little did I know that he did, in fact, have it. So, uh, two figures that I've been long since wanting being Alfred and Commissioner Gordon, I get both of them from Maxwell. And I, I can't say enough good things, Maxwell, other than uh, these figures want to keep falling over. Uh, the table is leaned back a little bit like I keep having. But this is the crime enforcement team. If I got the name right, I set my paper down from uh, technically uh, produced by Hasbro, but there are parts of the Kenner figures in here. And this came out in 1998. Again, Maxwell, thank you very much. And it's so cool to be able to do some more Batman, the animated series figures reviews and be able to slowly officially complete my collection. And as always, this is Rob for Rob's Rogues and the Batman universe signing off saying we will see you guys next time.